Hey everybody, this is an entry from uh, Robert J. Alexander's uh, International Trotskyism 1929-1985, to a documented analysis um, from 1991. The section, the entry is titled, United Secretariat of the Fourth International, Its Origins. The split in the Fourth International, which took place in 1952-3, had largely been consummated when steps began to be taken, which, in the eyes of some of the people involved, were designed to try to re-establish the unity of the international Trotskyist movement. A leading role in this process was taken by the Lanka Sama Samaja Party of uh, LSSP of Ceylon, or Sri Lanka, which, although staying in the International Secretariat of the Fourth International of the Poblowites, shared many of the views of the rival group organized in the International Committee of the French International, excuse me, of the Fourth International. It was to take a decade before even partial reunification was to prove possible, and even then the process was to be far from complete. The first party commission. Leslie Guna Warden of the LSSP had meetings with Jerry Healy of the International Committee apparently soon after the Fourth World Congress of the Poblowites in July 1954. Out of this discussion came the decision to establish a parity commission of the two groups. As Fred Feldman has noted, quote, to Gunawarden, this was a step toward reunification, but for Healy, the parity commission was intended to win over the Ceylonese or Sri Lankan, and thus place the onus of blame for the continuation of the split on Pablo, end quote. Or, Michel Raptis. End quote. This parody commission soon became, I guess it's parody, parody commission soon became one, a bone of contention within the international committee. Although they had gone along with its establishment, the leaders of the Socialist Workers' Party often referred to in the relevant documents as, quote, the New Zealand section, end quote, quickly came to the conclusion that the Parity Commission was a bad idea. After some exchange of correspondence, they succeeded in convincing Jerry Healy. The French affiliate of the International Committee had been opposed to the commission from the beginning. The only leading figure in the International Committee who remained convinced that the exchange of documents between the Pablo Whites and the International Committee through the vehicle of a party commission was the best possible way of getting the IC, the International Committee, points of view presented to the leaders of the possibly sympathetic groups which still remained in the Pablo White organization, particularly the Ceylonese was Peng Shusi, the exile leader of China, the Chinese Trotskyist. One second, I'm going to make sure something. Make sure that's. Yeah, uh, Peng Shu Ji. I think that's how you pronounce his name. The exiled leader of the Chinese Trotskyists. He had closer contacts with the LSSP than did his European and U.S. colleagues. 
Peng continued to fight for the maintenance of the Parity Commission. After about a year and a half of discussion, a meeting in the inter- of the International Committee in Paris on November, excuse me, from November 7th to November 8th in 1955, decided to withdraw from the Parity Commission. The decision was taken by a vote of 5 to 1. With the French, British, Swiss, German, and Dutch sections voting in favor of withdrawal and only the Chinese delegate opposing the idea. Further efforts of Peng Shushi to change this, his colleagues' minds were to no avail. In 1957, there were further discussions looking to the possible reunion of the two factions of international Trotskyism. Pierre Frank has noted in discussing the International Secretariat's Fifth World Congress that, quote, in the course of preparing for the Congress, an attempt at reproachment with the International Committee was made with a view to reunification, end quote. But, quote, this attempt to, at reproachment failed, mainly because distrust on the organizational level persisted, end quote. Some controversy continued on whether the British section of the International Committee or the Socialist Workers' Party was more responsible for the failure of this attempt at reunification. The 1962-63 Party Commission and its results. The last attempt to try to reunite the Fourth International of the Pablo followers and the International Committee, which was partially successful, began in February 1962. In that month, the National Committee of the Socialist Labor League, Healy directed British affiliate of the International Committee, passed a motion calling for, quote, the International Committee to approach the International Secretariat with a view to the setting up of a subcommittee consisting of three members from the International Committee and the International Secretariat. The purpose of this committee would be to arrange an exchange of internal material on international problems among all the sections affiliated to both the sections. It is so to be hoped that such a step would encourage discussion, and the subcommittee could arrange for the regular publication of an international bulletin dealing with this. Eventually, the subcommittee would prepare a summary report on the area of agreement and differences between the two bodies, end quote. This resolution was unanimously accepted by the International Committee and agreed to by the International Secretariat. The first meeting of the so-called Parity Committee took place on September 2, 1962. This first meeting agreed to invite all national sections of both organizations to participate in the discussion which was being launched and to invite the Posadas group, which had already broken away from the International Secretariat to, take, to also take part. It agreed to hold meetings every month and to organize joint activities, particularly around the question of getting the Soviet leaders to, quote, rehabilitate, end quote, Trotsky, and the issue of the Angolan Revolution then in progress. The meeting also urged the end of all factional activity within both groups. In addition, the September 2nd, 1962 Party Committee meeting had before it two seats, excuse me, two sets of proposals from the International Committee and the International Secretariat. The former was more or less what was adopted by the meeting, with the addition of a proviso that, quote, the Parity Committee agrees to work for the calling of a preliminary international congress during the summer of 1964. The purpose of this Congress would be to establish the political policies and the relationship of forces between the various tendencies so that discussion can proceed towards a definitive solution of the international crisis, end quote. The International Secretariat Resolution was one passed by the 23rd plenum of its International Executive Committee, which had taken place a few days before. 
the resolution expressed, quote, its strong belief that the political and organizational conditions exist for a successful reunification. It appeals to all the Trotskyists in order that they be equal to their responsibilities and help the world movement to progress with reunified forces in the historical period of world revolution. In March, which we'll see in the coming years, the progressive integration of our cadres in the mass revolutionary forces in all the continents, end quote. Several subsequent meetings of the Party Committee were held. It was clear from the start that different elements involved in the Party Committee exercise had different objectives. The majority leadership in the International Secretariat, headed particularly by Ernest Mandel, Pierre Franck, and Livio Mitan, were anxious to reunite as much of the world Trotskyist movement as possible as soon as possible. One minority of the International Secretariat, which was against reunification, had already broken away from the International Secretariat under the leadership of J. Posadas before the Parity Committee was even established. A second element of the International Secretariat, headed by Michel Pablo, who was by that time in the employ of the new Algerian government of Ben Bella, and its reservation excuse me, had its reservations about the unity drive and formed its own tendency within the International Secretariat. There were also differences of opinion and objectives within the International Committee. These apparently became clear at a meeting of the International Committee in January 1963. On the one hand, the Socialist Workers' Party of the United States shared the International Secretariat's, Secretariat Majority's objective of rapid reunification of the world movement, bringing together as many elements as were willing to participate in the process. On the other hand, another group composed principally of the British and French sections of the International Committee felt that the first thing necessary was a thorough discussion of the causes of the original split and repudiation of, quote, Pabloism, which they felt had been responsible. Possible reunification could only take place after an extensive period of discussion. These different points of view proved irreconcilable, at least on the side of the International Committee. As a consequence, there was a conference of the pro-unification elements of the International Committee in March 1963, which Joseph Hansen claimed included not only the Socialist Workers' Party, but also the Argentine, Austrian, Canadian, Chilean, Chinese, and Japanese sections, and agreed to join with the International Secretariat sections in mounting a reunification congress which took place in June 1963. The so-called, quote, reunification congress, end quote, only reunified part of the international Trotskyist movement. There were important elements from both the International Secretariat forces and those of the International Committee which did not participate in this process. The Congress of Reunification The majority faction in the International Secretariat and the pro-unification part of the International Committee each held a Congress which discussed the problems and possibilities of unity of the Trotskyist movement. Both meetings involved documents which subsequently were to be adopted by the Reunification Congress of the Fourth International which was held in June 1963. The Reunification Congress adopted the resolutions which had been previously approved. However, the faction of the International Secretariat, led by Michel Pablo, presented a minority resolution for discussion. Representatives of his tendency were elected as a minority in the new International Executive Committee chosen by the meeting. A full day of the Congress was devoted to the discussion of the Algerian Revolution concerning which Pablo presented a report. 
As Pierre Franck has noted, quote, the Congress was unanimous in seeing important possibilities for the development of the Algerian revolution towards a socialist revolution as it happened in China. Excuse me, as it happened in Cuba. Excuse me, Jesus Christ. Apologize for that. And decided to do its utmost to mobilize the international and its sections in support of the Algerian revolution, end quote. The major document adopted by the Reunification Congress was entitled, quote, Dynamics of World Revolution Today, end quote. This 17-page document presented the basic orientation of the majority element in international Trotskyism in 1963. The statement started by noting that, quote, the classical schema of world revolution assumed that the victory of socialism would occur first in the most industrially developed countries, setting example for the less developed, end quote. However, the resolution, quote, noted, quote, the revolution followed a more devious path than even its greatest theoreticians had expected, end quote. As a consequence, quote, all the victorious revolutions after 1917, including the establishment of worker states through revolutionary upheavals in Yugoslavia, China, Vietnam, and Cuba, thus took place in relatively backward countries, while the possibility of early revolutionary victory in the imperialist countries was postponed, end quote. Pierre Franck. Oh, never mind, that's not Peter Frank, that's fucking... Dude, I'm getting fucked up, I'm sorry. Forgive me. It's from the fucking resolution. This, that was presented, the basic orientation of the majority element in international Trotskyism in 1963. Anyway. Following the general line of thought, this general line of thought, the resolution claimed that, quote, it is important to recognize that the three main forces of world revolution, the colonial revolution, the political revolution in the degenerated or deformed worker states, and the proletarian revolution in the imperialist countries form a dialectical unity. Each force influences and the others and receives in return, powerful impulses or breaks on its own development, end quote. After viewing each of these aspects of the world revolution, the resolution argued, quote, the most probable variant in the next few years is therefore the following. The colonial revolution will continue involving new countries and deepening its social character as more worker states appear. It will not lead directly to the overthrow of capitalism in the imperialist centers, but it will play a powerful role in building a new world revolutionary leadership, as is already clear from the emergence of Castroist currents. The pressure of the masses in the workers' states will continue with a tendency toward increasing mass action and the possible beginning of political revolution in several workers' states. Both these developments will favorably influence the resurgence of mass militancy among the proletariat in the imperialist countries, reinforcing a tendency stemming directly from the socio-economic mechanism of advanced capitalism and the slowing down of its rate of expansion, end quote. In its discussion of the basic issue which had split the Fourth International a decade earlier, quote, Entrism sui generis, end quote. This basic document of the Reunification Congress would seem to have been closer to the, quote, Pablo White, end quote, position of 1952 to 53 than to that of Pablo's opponents, although it was somewhat less explicit than Pablo had been. This discussion started with the claim that the Fourth International, quote, in its programmatic declarations and in its participation in the class struggle on a worldwide scale 
has proved itself to be the legitimate heir and continuator of the great tradition of revolutionary Marxism. Events have proved it right on so many points that even its antagonists have had to borrow from its arsenal, though in a partial, one-sided, or distorted way, end quote. Admittedly, Sumi, admitting that the Fourth International and its sections remained relatively small, the resolution asserted that, quote, the world Trotskyist movement has given much consideration to the problem of setting out with small forces to win the working class and organize it into a party capable of challenging the rule of the capitalist class. The overall principle on which it has proceeded on the organizational level is that a revolutionist must not permit himself to be separated from his class under any circumstances, dot, 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 they, dot, 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 belong to the big organizations of the masses, whether they be nationalistic, cultural, or political in character. Insofar as possible, they advance the ideas and the program of Trotskyism among the members of these organizations and seek to recruit from them. They have no choice but to practice, quote, entryism, that is, to participate as an integrated component in the internal life of the mass movement, dot, dot, dot. The purpose of, quote, entryism is not to construct a, quote, pressure group, end quote, as some critics have charged, but to build a mass revolutionary Marxist party in the real conditions that must be faced in a number of countries. For a certain stage of work, no particular alternative remains open. Owing to national peculiarities, the tactic has many variants. It must be applied with great flexibility and without dogmatism of any kind. The norm for those engaging in it is to maintain a sector of open public work, including their own Trotskyist publication. End quote. The document also contained a gesture in the direction of the, quote, anti-Pablo, end quote, position, which had been that of the International Committee, quote, the building of an alternative leadership of the working class, i.e. of new revolutionary mass parties, remains the central task of our epoch. The problem is not that of repeating over and over again this elementary truth, but of explaining concretely how it is to be done. In fact, the building of revolutionary mass parties combines three concrete processes. The process of defending and constantly enriching the Marxist revolutionary program, of building, educating, and hardening a revolutionary Marxist cadre, and of winning mass influence for this cadre. These three processes are dialectically intertwined, dot, 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 end quote. The resolution also reflected the close association elements of the United Secretariat e either had or hoped to develop with the Algerian and Cuban revolutionary regimes. noting that, quote, in previous decades, end quote, failure to develop a revolutionary party before the outbreak of revolution, quote, would signify certain defeat for the revolution, end quote. It went on to say that, quote, because of a series of new factors, however, this is no longer necessarily the case. The example of the Soviet Union, the existence of worker states from whom material aid can be obtained, and the relative weakening of world capitalism have made it possible for revolutions in some instances to achieve partial successes, even to go so far as the establishment of a worker's state. Revolutionary Marxists in such countries face extremely difficult questions, end quote. But, quote, dot, 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 no choice is open to them in such situations but to participate completely and wholeheartedly in the revolution and to build the party in the very process of the revolution itself, end quote. Finally, the resolution reiterated that, quote, 
only an international based on democratic centralism, permitting different tendencies to confront each other democratically while uniting them in action, can allow experiences from all corners of the world to become properly weighed and translate into revolutionary tasks on a world scale, dot, dot, dot. The necessity to build a strong, democratically centralized international is underscored all the more by the present dialectical relationship between the three main sectors of the world revolution, dot, 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 end quote. Presumably the conclusive argument on the issue was that, quote, the f that Fidel Castro, as a result of his own experience in a living revolution, today stresses the decisive importance of building Marxist-Leninist parties in all countries, end quote. The Latin American parties of the International Committee, which had been grouped together in the Latin American Secretariat of Orthodox Trotskyism, did not immediately join the United Secretariat. However, quote, once the reunification was consummated, our tendency, SLATO, S-L-A-T-O, characterized it as positive, gave it critical support, and began a process of discussions and negotiations, dot, dot, dot. Only in December 1964, when the discussions and negotiations which we had carried on for more than a year culminated, our tendency, Slato, headed by Palabra Obrera, transformed its critical support of reunification into formal entry into the Fourth International headed by the United Secretariat, end quote. Conclusion during the early 1950s, the Fourth International suffered a major split, dividing it into two organizationally distinct groups. The major policy issue at the heart of this schism was the old question of, quote, entrism, which had been a cause of controversy even when Leon Trotsky was still alive, but an entrism of a rather different type which in most European and many Asiatic countries would have meant the virtual disappearance of any open Trotskyist organization. This policy was posited on a new perspective of a revolutionary process of, quote, several countries, end quote, during which leadership would be in the hands of Stalinist parties and of Stalinist-type bureaucracies in countries in which the revolution triumphed leaving the Trotskyists supposedly no alternative but to work for their ideas within those parties and regimes. Undoubtedly, organizational and personal issues also played important parts in the 1952-53, to 53, excuse me, Undoubtedly, organizational and personal issues also played important parts in 1952-53 to 53 in the split of the Fourth International. A decade later, through the device of suspending more or less indefinitely any further discussion of the causes of the split and including elements from the positions of both factions in a new position statement, unity of major elements of both sides was achieved. Mm -hmm. However, important parts of both international factions stayed out of the United Secretariat of the Fourth International, so that, quote, reunification, end quote, in fact, resulted in there being three international factions instead of two. Thanks for listening.